On behalf of PerfectGame.tv, my name is Darren Sutton. The pinnacle for every team is that world championship, wherever you win it, as a travel ball team or as the Kansas City Royals, who were the world champions back in 2015. Their general manager and architect is Dayton Moore. But don't misunderstand Moore. This is a tried and true scout. This is a man who was a college coach at one point. He is a scout through and through. And 2020 has been a challenge for scouts and player development leaders like we have never seen before based on everything being shut down and scouts having to stay home. That's where I go when we visit Kansas City and have a conversation with Dave. So as you have watched your scouts this year, you've watched them struggle to evolve, not in a negative way, but they've had to, right? As you've watched them go through what they've gone through, speak on their behalf, big picture, how your scouts have had to kind of navigate through this year. Well, that's, that's a great question, Darren, and you hit it right on the head. I mean, there's been challenges that we never expected. Um, the, the one thing that we felt was going to be really important as we left spring training and and expecting maybe a prolonged shutdown. We, we, we anticipated that. And so we wanted to be very transparent. We wanted to communicate as much as possible. And in fact, as of June 1, we had 1,240 Zoom calls as an organization. And that encompassed all of our players, our minor league players, our trainers, all of our scouts, our department heads, made sure that uh, you know, Lonnie Goldberg, Gene Watson, professional scouting, amateur scouting, made sure we are continuing to dialogue on a daily basis, have these calls, talk about players. And I think in some ways, we were probably more prepared for the draft than we've ever been. And so because of organizations like Perfect Game that have done such a terrific job of bringing talent together from all over the country, where we have a chance to evaluate the players against the best that their peer group has to offer, and then to be able to take those evaluations and to spend more time on you know, their makeup, what they're about, uh, the things that they value, the individual players, what they value. We were able to uh, uh, slow things down a little bit. And I think maybe have a, a, a more complete evaluation in some ways. Now, we didn't get a, a chance to finish some things off. You know, We didn't get a chance to watch Austin Hendrick up in Pennsylvania because the season was shut down. Uh, prior getting looks at him, but we were fortunate to be able to see him all summer and most of the fall. And uh, that's some of the great things that's going on in our game right now is uh, kids love to play and we get a chance to watch them play year-round. Scouting in your mind, and you're a longtime scout, that's where after coaching in college you started to cut your teeth in baseball. But scouting is, and I'd love for you to expound upon this, in your mind, the backbone of every organization, correct? Absolutely. I mean, to me, area scouting supervisors, minor league managers, most important roles in an organization. Without the area scout um, creating the vision for the player, the very first vision of the player, and, and having conviction in that player, um, he never gets an opportunity to be evaluated at the highest level and then that opportunity to join the organization. And then that scout's vision is passed on to player development, and it's ultimately up to the minor league manager to take that vision, build up on it, support it, and do everything they can to come alongside the player to help, to help them reach their ceiling. And so to me, that's always been crucial. I find when I chat with you, whether it's at spring training or, or run into you, you know, as a dad at a PG event, that um, – you're constantly evolving, which is so refreshing, but you don't like to engage in that old school scout, new school scout, right? I mean, you're either old school or you're new school. Um, I've even read you say like, that's, that's not the, I don't want to go that way with my guys. Uh, which way would you like to go? If someone brings that up to you, you would say what? I would say I'm in school. I mean, I'm constantly learning. The, the, the data, the technology is very, very helpful. You and I didn't grow up in the game that way just because it wasn't here. But if it, was, it really didn't exist to the level it does now, obviously. But if it would have been there, we would have embraced it. We would have wanted sure. everything about the player. But I'm thankful that I grew up the way I did. So when I was trained as an area scouting supervisor, yes, I'd sit behind home plate with a radar gun. But I was trained to guess the speed of the pitch before I looked at the speed of the pitch. I had a stopwatch. 
before I looked at the stopwatch, when the batter runner ran to first base, I guessed the time. So I was constantly training my eyes and constantly listening to what other scouts and other evaluators were saying about a player. I learned to ask questions of the coach and the teacher and the teammate to learn about the player. And now we have all this data that comes along and evaluates our opinion. Darren, we believe that you must see it with your eyes first, make an evaluation first, and then use the data to validate your judgment. Or if your eyes aren't seeing it and the data says, you know what, this guy's better than your eyes are telling you, you better look longer, you better look deeper. And so it's just, it's almost like having the answers to the test before you take the test. Well, you don't learn anything, right? And so when you evaluate a player, if you look, for me, if you look at all the data first, that's telling me what I should see. No, I want to see it first. I want to feel it first. And then I want to look at the data and say, you know what, Dayton, it validated your judgment. Or perhaps, guess what? This, this information, this technology, this data, this, is, this player is perhaps better than you think. And then that challenges you to, to be a better scout and to see maybe something that you're not seeing. How did you player develop this year? You follow me there. And I know you, you and Ben Charrington and others have been on committees to try and figure out what to do outside of instructs. I know the fall league was canceled. Um, but I know you were a voice in that because your organization is a voice in that, right? So how frustrating was it to not classically player develop? And how did you player develop this year? Well, like I said before, the communication part of it is really, really important. So we had, yeah. in, we had individual development plans for all of our minor league players. Alex Zumwalt, Paul Gibson, J.J. Piccolo spearheaded those efforts. Uh, our, our minor league coaches, pitching coaches, hitting coaches would get feedback, video feedback constantly, and being able to uh, dialogue with our players. And I really believe, Darren, that our players – have, have really gotten a lot better because they've taken more of an active role in their development. They've had to coach themselves more than they ever have in the history of their careers. And that's really, really important because every successful player understands that they have to take an active role in their development. They've got to be focused every single day on getting better. And so we're getting ready to start our fall camps. And, um, you know, we're going to have a group here at Kauffman Stadium. We'll have a group down at um, Arizona at our uh, spring training complex. I asked Paul Gibson last night, I said, Paul, are we going to be ready to have games as soon as you all are expecting? He says, oh, yeah. He says, our guys have been throwing on a throwing routine program, throwing to hitters, throwing to catchers, obviously. We've got the data. We've, we've got the feedback. I mean, they're in really, really good shape. Our performance science staff has come alongside of them and made sure they're doing everything that they need to do. And that's the beauty of, of, of kind of the, the shutdown. If, with technology, we've been able to stay in close contact. And so you've heard of the Khan Academy, right? You've heard of mm -hmm. the Khan Academy in education. Our performance science people created the Kaufman Academy. And so we have uh, created lesson plans and um, um, seminars for all of our players to take part in and educate them and, 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 and have them come to class, have them come to school and, and, and talk to them about all the different aspects of development in the game. And so hopefully we're not only are we, are we training future major league players, we are training future scouting directors, farm directors, performance science people, um, behavioral science people, leadership development. I mean, we've spent so much time in there to educate our players so they can be the stewards of this game in the future. And so that's how we've went about this. That's been the spirit of our organization during this, this shutdown period. How can we educate, educate, educate so our players be, can become the future leaders and decision makers of our game? I can't wait to see what the future of the Kansas City Royals holds as well as they get back to the new normal in scouting and player development. On behalf of PerfectGame.tv, my name is Darren Sutton.